This is part three of Blabbermouth and Little Love Tap Uncle. Guys, this is the final part of the saga. It is about to get very crazy. You can find the first part and the second part in the description below. Here's the final saga. What's up, guys? Here's part three of Blabbermouth. We had a lot of conversations with father-in-law about Blabbermouth's antics. He thinks that her behavior stems from jealousy. Hubby and I have some years of financial hardship before it got better. Even before we came into money, we lived a relatively comfortable life after we managed to get more financial stability. Blabbermouth, brother-in-law, and their family weren't dirt poor, but they didn't have as many holidays, weekends away, or day trips as we did. It became less when our children were born, but we still went away from time to time. Father-in-law thinks that part of the jealousy started there and became worse after. I asked if she might think that we wanted to flaunt our new wealth to her. Father-in-law thought it might. Hubby and I think her behavior is twofold. We think that jealousy is indeed a part of it, but also entitlement. She also thinks that she and or her own family should be a part of it in the spotlight and get something out of it, even if it's not about them or for them. She seems to think that she deserves all kinds of things. According to Hubby, this started in a childhood and has continued into adulthood. I also asked my father-in-law why she disrespects me slash my job. Father-in-law stated that may be jealousy as well. I managed to go through college and get my bachelor and master's degree. I've always worked, although less when our children were born. She did not follow any higher form of education. She got her education as a child care provider for a daycare center and that's it. She stopped working for a number of years and has cleaned homes for a couple years to earn a bit of extra cash. Father-in-law thinks that my educational rap sheet, as he jokingly calls it, impressed her and made her jealous. I earned a great deal more before my investments and started to generate more money. I wonder if I did right by helping them out. My intentions were good. I know the importance of education, and I knew the kids would have difficulties following any form of college education without amassing a huge amount of debt, either for themselves or their parents. My parents worked hard to provide for my brother and I, so that we would not need to start our adult lives with debt. Our nieces and nephews are very grateful for everything we did and do for them. They know about all the effort that went into it. At this point, we are also no contact with brother-in-law and blabbermouth. They don't know how our current address and we have a P.O. box in a different town. I also changed my phone number, although I kept the other one for business purposes to gather evidence. We've been awarded with a temporary no-contact order from the court. Blabbermouth and brother-in-law are not allowed contact in any way, shape, or form, not even through a third party. We're trying to get one for at least a year, maybe two, if that's possible. She's also facing charges of defamation, instigating violence and harassment. Lawyer is digging deep and throwing anything he legally can at her. The one thing I'm grateful of is that our friends never changed. They knew and they didn't care. They said that they knew that we had money and that it didn't matter to them. That what mattered is what we were there for them and them in the good and bad times. Mother-in-law and father-in-law do know where we live, but they don't have the address on paper. Hubby drove them over one time, and he made it very clear to mother-in-law that under no circumstances is she going to show or tell anyone else where we live. People want to see us, she can pass on the message and phone number to us, and we'll call them. Reason for this, well, mother-in-law has a soft spot for blabbermouth. Mother-in-law has been asking if any reconciliation was possible. We said at this point no, and Blabbermouth is not even remotely sorry for what she's done. She's trying to deny everything that happened and even tries to blame us. She has destroyed our relationship with family members on her own. So, no. Mother-in-law tried to get us to forgive Blabbermouth, as she did not mean it. Didn't want it to happen so much... Truth be told, I lost my cool at this point. I love mother-in-law to death, really, I do. She's such a sweet lady and has done so much for us, especially concerning our children. But I told her the same thing as I told Blabbermouth. 
that she should be happy with the things that were given to her and her children, but oh no, she had to get greedy. I got slapped for crying out loud. I got threats against my life, hubby's life, and the lives of my children. Even if it was said in the heat of the moment, like, what the actual heck? Eventually, I got up and left. Hubby and father-in-law talked to her and made it clear that it's not up to us to do anything to repair anything. That ball is in Blabbermouth's court. I did apologize to mother-in-law for losing my cool, but not for the messages. That remained the same. This situation has shaken me to my core. I've done things that go against my nature. Even without money and even debt, people were always welcome to eat at our table and stay over. Now, I keep wondering if people tell me their sob stories because they want money from me and not care about me as a person. Just an ATM machine, nothing more. Do I regret helping out? Yes and no. The four eldest children of Blabbermouth are doing great. Same goes for other sister-in-law, my parents, and my brother and his family. Certified loan cousin is also doing great. He and his girlfriend have some plans for their home and are saving up to do it. He asked for investment advice and I gave him websites for courses and phone numbers of the person who helped me all those many moons ago. We also made a savings plan that I helped them budget for. I do that as a volunteer for an organization that helps people in debt. My regret is helping out Blabbermouth herself, letting her share in the good fortune, but I can't help but wonder what she would have done if we would not have helped her. Probably just the same. She'll rear her ugly head in my life from time to time, of that I'm sure. If that's the case, my dear friend Lawyer will get the opportunity to sharpen his lawyer knives and have some fun. As of now, we're waiting for Blabbermouth's court case. What's up, guys? Mr. Reddito here. Oh my goodness, it's about to get insane. Guys, the next update that I'm about to read, you will not see this one coming. I hope you're enjoying this story so far today. This is the third part in the series. You can find part one and part two in the description below. Title of the next post is, Are You Kidding Me? I don't believe it. This has to be a joke. It has to be a joke. Well, first joke, I think someone has found out where we live. We woke up last Sunday to find the tires of the car slashed. All of them. Not only that, it has some wonderful artwork on both sides of the car. AKA, it was scratched. So, what did little old me and hubby do? If you guys check the security footage, pat yourself on the back, you got it right. Our cars have dash cams that record 24-7 and are parked several streets over. Security measure number... I lost track. <laughs> we take them out, place another set, and look at the footage while saving records. You can guess again who you think it was. Did you say Blabbermouth? Then I'm sorry to disappoint you. It was one of Hubby's cousins. The one who thought I should just hand over the money. Bow down to the will of the family, and that Hubby should get his woman in line. Yeah, remember him from part one? I certainly do. Police were called and we handed over security footage alongside pictures of said cousin's social media. Address, phone numbers, emails. Better be thorough, right? Afterwards, Hubby called his mother to see if she, either by accident or not, spilled the beans. For now, she said she didn't. She and father-in-law are thinking hard if they might have missed something. I called my family and they're all also thinking hard if they've said something to someone. Yeah. And second joke, Blabbermouth and brother-in-law have filed a lawsuit against me, to an extent hubby. Guess for what? If you guess defamation, then dance your own wonderful dance, ding, ding, ding. Since Blabbermouth is a social pariah in the family and in the hometown, she blames me for all her woes in this. People in the hometown talked a lot and people looked at her with an upturned nose. They don't like that at all. Life has become somewhat uneasy for them. Hmm, I wonder why. She's claiming that I'm the one who's apparently blabbed outrageous lies to people in town's gossip machine and caused her drama. Fun part is, it was her own mother. Because she was so upset with what was happening, she talked and talked and talked and told a lot of people. Lawyer is still rolling over the ground laughing. 
Literally, he's on the ground right now laughing. They demanded compensation for their ruined reputation. They're willing to settle and keep it out of court. He's already started an answer. When I saw the letter, I was angry and humored at the same time. Really, Blabbermouth? That's your game plan now? Very well. Game's on. So whose else's jaws dropped at the depths of this sea? What's up, guys? Mr. Redito here. Up next is an update on Cousin. Here's what OP has to say. I have a small update on the Cousin who decided to use our car to vent his frustrations, as well as on the lawsuit Blabbermouth hit us with. So guys, strap in your seatbelts with your favorite beverage, kick back your feet, sit back and enjoy. Here's the update on Cousin and the lawsuit. Cousin has probably lost his job or has a lot of trouble there. Apparently, his boss got wind of the fact that he vandalized our cars and was caught on camera. Don't know how he found out and frankly don't care. Boss is not happy at all. From the family members that don't have a no contact order against us, we hear the two different tales. What I know for certain is that our cousin's job stunt, he pulled, got him into serious trouble. We also have a temporary no contact order against him. Damages are set to be fixed in two weeks time. Cousin has been told the amount of damage he has caused. He can pay for it out of his own pocket, and of course, his insurance companies don't pay for idiots destroying other people's cars. He'll also see the inside of a courtroom in either August or September. We also found out how he found our cars. His friend lives in the same neighborhood as we do. We didn't know this, but Cousin seemed to have told his friend his version of events, and his buddy told us he saw us in the neighborhood. Wonder what friend thinks now, after what cousin did. As for the lawsuit, let's get the people clear. Lawyer friend Blabbermouth, here we go. My dear lawyer friend has had his batch of cookies, and he's loved them. Oatmeal raisin, it's his favorite. He also replied to Blabbermouth, sending some of what he had on text, voicemails, and emails with a note that if Blabbermouth did not drop the lawsuit, we would counter file and demand compensation of whatever kind. There were people who thought that Blabbermouth lied to her lawyer. She, of course, did. She told a bunch of lies and decided to fabricate evidence to prove it. Lawyer saw it, and let me tell you right now, Blabbermouth's lawyer did not like it and dropped them as a client. I can't help but want to be a fly on the wall when Blabbermouth's lawyer told Blabbermouth that... Let's see what she'll do next. I'm halfway wondering if I should get some popcorn and a soda pop to enjoy this. Next update. How Entitled Cousin Met Fru Fru. Hey people, I have a different type of update on Entitled Cousin, or EC for short. He's the dude that, should I say, bent to the wheel of the family. I'm out of ideas for nickname. So here we go. We're still waiting for the court meeting, but some charges are being added next to vandalism and destruction of personal property. No, he did not scratch our cars or slash our tires this time. Smart man. Instead, he got to meet Fru Fru, our neighbor's dog and our neighbor. As it's summer, Hubby and I decided to go on a holiday in our own country again. Due to COVID, we did not feel going abroad to our holiday home, so we're vaccinated although our children are not. We had a blast. Kids could go to the pool a couple times, had to make reservations, and made friends with the other children. Halfway through our holiday, we get a phone call. Little Big Brother, younger but taller than me. So, he called to tell me that Entitled Cousin had been arrested. Again! This time, this idiot actually did find our home. And you lovely people can try and guess what he did. Did he throw rocks through the window? No. No. Did he spray graffiti on the house? <laughs> no. No, Mr. Smarty Pants tried breaking in. Our home has a big wooden fence around our backyard, but the position of the wooden planks make it impossible or at least very difficult to climb them. Entitled Cousin had come to the dead of night, early morning hours, and used a ladder to climb the fence. So now he's in our backyard, tools in hand, and he starts getting busy trying to open the back door. Um, good luck with that, buddy. Our neighbor walks Fru-Fru quite early this morning. So, neighbor takes Fru-Fru out for his first walk to pee and poop for the day. Our neighborhood loves the guy and his loyal friend. 
More than once has he found people at homes who should not be there. Neighbor and Fru-Fru walk and find themselves looking at a ladder standing against the fence of my house. Neighbor knows the situation and knows that we're not home. Neighbor hears some noise at the back door and realizes what's happening. So what does he do? He lets Fru-Fru loose to climb the ladder and jump into our yard. Fru-Fru sees Entitled Cousin and starts growling. Who's Fru-Fru? Fru-Fru is the sweet, caring, funny, big, and protective as heck, Cane Corso of Neighbor. How did he get the name Fru-Fru? Well, Neighbor's wife loves Beauty and the Beast, and the little dog turned seat has the name Fru-Fru. So, Entitled Cousin sees Fru-Fru, who is not amused at seeing a stranger in his yard. Entitled Cousin is apparently not so smart and throws a couple of tools in Fru-Fru's direction. Well, Fru-Fru's having none of that. Barks and charges at him. Entitled Cousin barely manages to climb on a table before Fru-Fru gets to him. Fru-Fru is a trained dog, so he doesn't bite until ordered to. Meanwhile, Neighbor's standing on the ladder, peeing his pants at the girly screams of Entitled Cousin while calling the guys and gals in blue. Entitled Cousin is whisked away in the back of the police car and has to stay a night in jail until his hearing. Lawyer demanded that he not be released until his hearing. The no-contact order is apparently not sufficient to keep him away. We managed to send the security footage to the legal people involved. Fru-Fru got some nice doggy snacks. And Neighbor and his wife were promptly thanked. I have to admit one thing, though. When we got back, the kids went to spend the night at their friends for some lumber time party. Hubby and I went to watch the footage. It was golden. And yes, we grabbed ourselves some drinks and popcorn to watch. Again. And again. Final update. Final part of the saga. Last bit. Titled, And now my own extended family knows as well. I don't have a lot of aunts and uncles left, plenty of cousins though, as dad had six sisters, who all had children. Only four cousins are younger than I am. I haven't spoken to them in like 20 years, and the only time I've spoken with them was at a funeral of one of the aunts and uncles I have no relationship with. I've received several messages of cousins who heard through a lot of people that I had money. When I read this, I was mentally preparing for yet another shitstorm. Yeah, they were mad. They wanted to know why I didn't tell anyone. One of them ranted and raved about how unfair everything was, and I could have let them know and yada yada yada. When she finally was done, I asked, perhaps rather rudely, if she was done and if I could explain. I made one group, and I wrote the whole story of what was happening in the group. I ended the words in bold, underlined, huge letters, This is why I never told you. Several were shocked at what did happen. I asked them why they were upset I didn't tell them. No one really answered that until I saw that maybe because they wanted to benefit from it. Some, no ways, and how can you think that of us? I answered that reason I think is because all of that crap that's hit the fan. I've lost a lot of trust in people in general because of all this mess. To make a long story short, a couple of them asked if they could get, yes, get not borrow, some money. Others said they would like to borrow some if possible. I uploaded a document that CLC, Certified Loan Cousin, and I signed. I told them that was what stated in the document were the rules. They could read it or not. One cousin asked if I could give him a phone call, so I did. Turns out, his daughter has a severe illness. Without treatment, she'll likely die. I won't name it for anonymity's sake, this is a treatment in the U.S. that could help her. Chances remain slim, but if it's successful, his daughter might live. A somewhat good quality of life. Unfortunately, that treatment's not paid for by insurance companies. I didn't trust it after so many stories, and I had to get more details. He asked if I could come and visit. His daughter was in the hospital, and let me tell you guys right now, he did not lie one bit. Gosh, that girl. She's nearly in her 20s, but still. Tubes, monitors, everywhere. Books on beds as she tried to do some homework. I could almost see death standing at her shoulder, waiting, grinning. She was so... 
We had a talk, and eventually her attending doctor came in and explained a bit. Later, I went with the doctor to his office and he explained the rest. I went home afterwards and we verified the doctor's name, filled, etc. Cousin and I talked again on the phone. I told him I hadn't made a decision yet and wanted to know if they wanted the money for medical cost only. He confirmed so. His wife, mother of said daughter, would go to the US and they had money to cover her expenses. It would be tight, but they wanted only the money for medical cost. Hubby and I talked and let me tell you, we agreed. We agreed to help, but again, strict rules. We would only pay the amount that we were given. The US hospital gave them a number. We would pay the hospital directly and other important details. Only thing we asked in return is that in the event of success and failure, they would put a certain amount of money towards research and installments if necessary. Lawyer drew up the contract and asked another lawyer to review it. This lawyer is specialized in the medical field. I called cousin again. I told him that I had thoroughly examined the entire situation. I had been played and lied to. I was attacked in many ways and I had lost my trust in people. I thanked him for his honesty in the situation and commented how hard it must be. I then asked him if his wife was listening. She wasn't, but he put it on speakerphone. I then told them the news. The only thing I heard were tears, cries, and chants of thank you in the air. I told them I did have strict rules and sent them a draft of the document. I asked them to ask a lawyer or maybe the hospital lawyer to review it. If they agreed, we could go ahead and sign. Later, their daughter called me. Same story as her parents. I just hope that this time around the money will do good. Her doctor contacted me. We're going to arrange the financial details once the contract has been signed between my cousin and I. Other family members of mine have done the greedy grab hand. No was the simple answer. Alongside the number of investment advisors, told them good luck and blocked the beggars. I don't worry as much as them finding out where I live anymore. My parents, brothers, and his wife, my sister-in-law, can win a tight lip contest with an oyster. So, that's it guys. I feel pretty much safe nowadays and I want to thank you all for listening to my life's journey.